Uh, well, this is the last of the series, the, the, the two o'clock Tuesday series, isn't it? And we're doing insects, mm -hmm. creepy crawlies. So when Hannah told me she was having her centipede problems, I thought I'd just write something, which I've only just finished. And, and one of the reasons, because my phone kept going ding, 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 because Bianca was, mm -hmm. you know, Bianca was was harassing me. She didn't <laughs> know I was underneath a beetle at the time. So, so this is what I wrote. There's a bug in my computer, and I've got ants in my pants. There's a fly in the ointment, and I need to beetle off and put a flea in your ear. But there's an army of children coming my way, and they're attacking the food in my kitchen like a plague of lotus. It seems I've stirred up a hornet's nest. Well, that was just a little bit of this. Now, have you enjoyed this summer? You can, you can unmute. You can unmute and, uh, and talk to me. Uh, there's a... Uh, hello, Yanina. Hello. Oh, fantastic. Yanina's with us on Friday for our children's, our children's special. And, uh, Yanina, are you there? Hey, I can see you. Yeah, well, oh, I can see you now. Hey. Do you happen to have, you, Hannah's going to be a bit late. Oh. Pauline, who was going to be here today, <coughs> suddenly remembered that she had to go off on an elephant to, to the north of Scotland and, uh, and do something, but she might go, go with this later. So, Yanina, do you happen to have an insect one. story in your pocket? Mm. I've got a frozen Yanina. Ah. Mm. Those insects, there's bugs are getting in everywhere. Uh, so, we had um, Yanina, are you unfrozen yet? No, no, she's not unfrozen. There's a, she's, she's obviously in the refrigerator. There's a, still no problem. I'm just tight. So, Louis, are you having a good time? Have you had a good summer? Yes, I have indeed. How are you? How are you? How are you? Excellent. There's a little boy cold now. Where's he going? Some doves coming on. Oh, am I here? Am I here? Okay. Oh, I might well, be here. Just a second, John. And it there tells me my internet. I've. You have a problem with your internet. I've frozen. I think my internet's okay now. Oh, John, this is terrible. John, in answer to your question, do I have an insect story? I do have a story that has insects in it. Oh, fantastic. Have you got a story for us, Yanina? Yes, 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 yes. Could you tell us? Well, welcome, everyone, to the last of the Tuesday afternoon sessions at the World Storytelling Cafe. No, and not, Little please. Miracles, it's been a real pleasure to be with you all summer. So Yanina, this is Yanina uh, Vigas, and she's um, she's going to be with us on Friday. But for now, while we're waiting for Hannah, um, I, I happen to have Yanina in my side pocket. So I wondered if you could tell a story. <laughs> I can, yes. <laughs> Hello, small person. Are you going to stay for the story? Because look, there's lots of other lovely children here as well. Look, Daddy, you're going to the toilet. Oh, fantastic! We don't need to know that, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, hello. It's really wonderful to see you. I'm going to tell everybody the story. The two old ladies at the Do you? Yeah. 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 We, we did have a newt in our garden um, a few weeks ago, which is very in wildlife area, which is very exciting. And I'm going to put that story in my back pocket and I'm going to save it. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hi. 
Thank you. Wow, it's so lovely to see you all. My goodness me, how wonderful. This story happened way, way, way back, right at the beginning of everything. There lived a dear, sweet, kind old lady. Hmm. And she lived on her own. And every morning, every morning was the same as the morning before that, and the morning before that, and the morning before that, and the morning before that also. Every single morning she would gather up all of her dirty clothes, all of her stinky socks. Oh! You wanna smell that sock? Oh, oh, it smells revolting. And she would put all of her dirty clothes under her arm, and she would carry all of her clothes down through the forest, past the tall trees, past the small frog that sat on the corner of the path. And she would go down to the river and she would wash her clothes. She would wash her clothes in the river because there are no washing machines there. Every morning she would take her clothes and plunge them into the water they would go splosh, they would go splish, and she would hold them up to the sun, lay them out on a rock to dry. Every morning, she would take her clothes and plunge them into the water. Hear myself, Bianca. They would That's go very strange. Splosh. They would... Has anyone here, have any of you got any smelly socks with you that you can wash in the river. If you have, take your smelly sock and wash it in the river. There's a sock. Oh, John! Whew. I can smell that from here. <laughs> take your socks. Oh, look at that. I can see two socks from Louis, Lindsay, Tim and Dodell Banks. <laughs> Do they smell? Ah. <laughs> take your socks. And we're going to plunge them into the river. Plunge, plunge, plunge. Wash, wash, wash. Splish, splish, splish. Splash, splash, splash. And when they're clean, we're going to lay them on the rock to dry. Wonderful. Hi, Pauline. Hi. <laughs> Every morning was the same. Except... Except that... Before she started washing, Hi. hello, before she started washing, every single day, I forgot to tell you this, every single day she would wait for a bluebird to fly overhead. And she was so sweet and kind, this lady. She was so sweet and kind that every morning she would say, good morning, bluebird. And the bluebird, he was sure, would say, chip, chip and wave its hellos back. So when she said hello and good morning to Bluebird, then she would wash her stinky socks in the river. This particular day, when she woke up, she got up and she went down through the forest and past the tall trees and past the tiny frog that sat on the corner she got to the edge of the river and she waited. She waited for Bluebird. Strange, she thought. Someone else doing it. No Bluebird. Where to be seen? Oh well, she thought. Maybe he's off building a nest or catching worms for his babies. I'll wash my socks anyway. So she took her socks and she plunged and she splashed and she splashed and she rubbed and she held them up and laid them out on the rock. But then she spied out of the corner of her eye something on the ground. Something small, something blue, something feathery. And she said, Oh no! Bluebird! Why are you on the ground? 
the poor bird looked up at her and said, Chip, chip, chip. <gasps> Your wing is broken. Don't worry. I'll look after you. And so she carried him as carefully as she could all the way home. And when she got home, she cared for him. Cared for him for a day, cared for him for a week, cared for him for a month, cared for that poor bird for a whole year. And do you know what? At the end of all that caring, <laughs> the bird got <laughs> better. That's right, the bird got better. So she carried the bird all the way back to the river and she let the bird. <laughs> Right. Off the bird flew. Oh, it made her heart happy. Well, the next day when she went down through the forest, down past the tall trees, down past the frog, oh, she had all of her washing and she waited. She made it for what she did. And then she saw the blue bird flying past. The bird had something in its beak. When the bird got straight above her, straight overhead, the bird opened its beak and the something fell down and 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 boom, landed right there on the ground in front of her. She picked it up and said, oh, Bluebird, you've dropped your... Bluebird flew off. It was a tiny... Oh, she thought, this is strange. But she did what needed to be done with seeds. What do we do with seeds? Do we eat them? Oh, that's right. We put them in the ground. Plant and ground. That's right. So she made a little hole with her finger. Can you make a little hole with your finger in the ground? <laughs> And she planted the seed and she covered it up. Lovely. And she waited, oh, she scooped some water up from the river and she watered that plant and she cared for that plant. She cared for the seed. She cared for it for a day, cared for it for a week, cared for it for a month, cared for it for a whole year. And can you guess what happened to that seed? That's right, it grew. It grew up and up and up. And out and out and out. And in the middle of all that growing was the biggest, the roundest, the most enormous pumpkin that you have ever seen. <gasps> oh, thought the old lady. She picked the pumpkin and she carried it all the way home, thinking of all the delicious food that she could make with this pumpkin. Oh, she thought, hmm, I could make, I could make pumpkin soup. Oh, oh, I could make warm pumpkin curry. Oh, I could make I could make pumpkin stew with dumplings. Oh, and I could make a lovely pumpkin pie. Oh, oh, that would be delicious with custard and maybe cream and maybe ice cream as well. Yes, all of the things, all of the things. And she took her enormous knife. And she cut into the pumpkin. Boom. She cut the pumpkin in half. You'll never believe this. Inside the pumpkin, and I don't know if anyone here has ever put their hand inside a pumpkin before. Mm. Has anyone ever carved a pumpkin out before? How does it feel? Eh, goopy, icky, stringy, ugh, disgusting and delicious at the same time. <laughs> I love it. Oh, inside this pumpkin, there was a perfectly clean, warm bowl of pumpkin soup, already made, complete with a spoon and a piece of bread next to it. And next to that, there was a dish full of pumpkin curry. 
with some coriander and some naan bread on the side and then behind that there was pumpkin pie with cream ice cream and custard <laughs> right there inside the pumpkin there was my favorite food in there too there was fish pie and a knickerbocker glory all stacked up on top loads of different flavors of ice cream inside the pumpkin there was a roast beef dinner inside the pumpkin there was macaroni cheese inside the pumpkin there was shepherd's pie inside the pumpkin pauline i know you've got some favorite food and hannah you've got favorite food too tell me what are your favorite foods what was inside the pumpkin you said my one macaroni cheese macaroni <laughs> cheese Spaghetti bolognese. Oh, spaghetti bolognese inside the pumpkin. John, what was inside the pumpkin? I'd like a fly in my soup. A fly in your soup. Don't tell everybody, sir. Everyone will want one. Lucas, Lucas, have you got a favourite food? Oh, the fingers. Fish fingers. Fish fingers. Or maybe a fish finger sandwich inside the pumpkin wow oh my goodness there was a delay oh, so many delicious sorts of foods inside the pumpkin including a glass of wine for bianca because she's working so hard as well inside the pumpkin oh it was delicious has louis got has, has louis has louis got a paper oh louis i'm sorry i can't see you louis Oh, sausages. Oh, sausages. Yes, Louis. Absolutely. There were sausages inside the pumpkin too. Oh my goodness. That was delicious. But even more incredible than the sausages and the fish finger sandwiches and the spaghetti bolognese and the shepherd's pie and the glass of wine, there was a chocolate cake. Not just any chocolate cake though. The biggest and tallest chocolate cake that you have ever seen. Well, the only thing that the old lady could think to do was to eat and 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 she had for a day, she had for a week, she had for a month, she had for a whole year, but as hard as she tried, and believe me, she did try very hard. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. She just couldn't find space in her tummy for that chocolate cake. So she did what every good, kind, sweet old lady does, and she took it round to her next door neighbour. She took it round and she knocked on the door. And if you're joining in at home, you can give me three knocks on your door. You ready? One, two, three. <laughs> and she stood there with her chocolate cake and a nice smile. She had to wait quite a long time, but eventually the door opened. The door opened and the person behind the door said, what do you want? <clears throat> With a mean face. Who can show me their mean face? <laughs> what do you want? Oh, well, I've, I've got a chocolate cake here that I just can't, I just can't eat it all by myself, said the dear sweet kind old lady. So I thought I'd bring it around for, for us to share. And, and it came from inside the pumpkin and the pumpkin grew because I looked after the seed and the seed came from the blueberry because I looked after the blueberry. <laughs> Come inside, said the neighbour. So she came inside and they sat down with the cake. Dear sweet kind lady on one side, mean neighbour on the other side, cake in the middle and she told the mean old lady the whole story from the beginning to the and when she got to the end they'd eaten all of the cake oh <laughs> thank you for helping me out said the kind old lady and she picked up the plate and she went home and the mean old lady slammed the door behind her and said <laughs> I'm going to get a pumpkin seed like that for myself. <laughs> Just you wait and see. So, the next morning, the mean old lady walked through the forest. She walked past the tall trees. She walked past the frog. She ignored the frog that sits on the corner. And when she got to the edge of the river, she looked up 
and she saw a bluebird flying overhead. She reached down, picked up a stone, and she threw the stone at the bluebird. The stone left her hand. Boom! The stone hits the bluebird. Bang! The bluebird fell down and hit the floor. Poor old bluebird. Chip, chip, his other wing had been injured. Mean old lady picked up the bird by his leg and said, Ha! You're going to come home this year! And she carried him all the way home, just like this. How horrible. And when she got home, she flung him in the corner and said, There, you better get better. <laughs> she ignored the bird. She ignored him for a day, ignored him for a week, ignored him for a month, ignored him for a whole year. But do you know what? That little bird, it got better. Because that's what wild animals do. His wing was okay. It wasn't as good as it was before, but it worked. So, at the end of all that healing, the mean old lady picked up the bird again and said, right? You're going back! Carried him back all the way down to the river and flung him in the air! She waited. She waited because she knew that blue bed would come back. And it did. It flew overhead and it had something in its beak. When it got straight overhead, it dropped the something and the something fell down and down and down and down. Landed in front of the mean old lady. She picked it up and she said, oh, I've got my seed. <laughs> I've got my seed, I've got my seed. <laughs> it's all for me, all for me, all for me, not for you, all for me. <laughs> and she dropped it on the floor, kicked some dry, dusty soil over it, thought she ought to water it, so she <sighs> spat on it. And all of you very polite young people know that we do not spit. It's not nice. And she ignored the seed. She ignored it for a day, ignored it for a week, ignored it for a month, ignored it for a whole year. But do you know what that seed did? Of course you do. It grew up and up and up and out and out and out. And in the middle of all that growing was the biggest. The most enormous, the roundest, most orangey pumpkin that you have ever seen. She was thrilled. She cut the pumpkin, she picked the pumpkin up and she took the pumpkin home, thinking of all the delicious food that would be inside just for her. When she got home, she placed the pumpkin there on the kitchen table. She opened the kitchen drawer. She took out the biggest knife that she could find. And she cut it. Go oh, boom. The pumpkin fell into. And inside the pumpkin crawled spiders. Buzzed flies, came scorpions and fleas and worms and wasps and, and tarantulas and all of the biting, crawling, stinging things of the world. And they crawled up into her hair and they crawled into her ears and they crawled up her nose. And she said, Aah! and she ran. She ran, she ran, she ran, she ran, she ran for a day, she ran for a week, she ran for a month, she ran for a whole year. And as far as I know, she's running still. But all of the creatures have come back and they live just over there in the garden of the dear, sweet, kind old lady. And she loves them and she cares for them right up until now. Mm -hmm. Everything has a beginning. And everything has a middle, and nearly everything has an end. But that is the end of my story that was given to me by my friend called Jan Blake. And now I've given it 
to you. So thank you for listening. Give yourself a brilliant round of applause for me, Dabba. Sorry. Thank you, Yanina. And Yanina is back with us on Friday at six o'clock. Now, this is turning into a bit of a little miracle storytelling tent, festival tent, right? Because, uh, and Yanina jumped in because she flew in. She had a really fast fly that she could fly in on the back of. And uh, Hannah, Hannah, Hannah's, Hannah's sent out and got a new centipede to connect her, her bits and pieces up. And then Pauline's got here on the back of a really fast elephant that ran really fast. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to have Hannah tell a story and Pauline tell a story. And then it will be the end. It'll be the last <laughs> Tuesday. Oh! And Little Miracle would be such a pleasure. But Hannah Broford, would you, have you got an insect story for us? I have, John. Yes, thank you. Now, sorry that I was late, but a very naughty bug decided to climb inside my computer and cause all sorts of problems. So I thought we should have a story about a very naughty bug. Now, perhaps the naughtiest of bugs is a spider called a Nancy. Now, you may have heard of a Nancy before. He is a very tricky insect indeed. And this story is all about the day when Anansi decided to play a trick on his neighbours, his friends. Now you see, Anansi loved to play tricks, but he also loved to eat. He was always hungry. And Anansi when this story started, looked, well, a bit like a spider that you and I might know, but a little bit different. You see, he had eight legs, but they were very, very short and very, very close to his huge round body. And so he couldn't reach very high with his very short legs. And one morning, he woke up very hungry. He was always hungry. And he looked in his cupboards that were down low where his little short legs could reach. And they were empty. <gasps> but because he was so hungry, he thought to himself, I will get a chair and I will climb up onto my kitchen table and I'll reach with my little legs to the tall cupboards. Now don't try this at home because you might end up like an antsy. He climbed up on the chair, he climbed up on the table and he reached up with his little arms and he opened the cupboard and he saw that there was just one packet of biscuits and he tried to reach, but he couldn't reach it. <clears throat> mm, fell off the table and he fell off the chair onto the floor. <gasps> and his poor tummy was still grumbling and growling with hunger. Well, he didn't want to do that again. But what was he going to do? Now, you and I, we might go down to the shop and buy ourselves some breakfast. But Anansi didn't walk, want to walk all the way down to the town to get some breakfast. No, he decided he would find his breakfast somewhere else. And so he went out of his door and he stood in the middle of his little road with eight other houses all with brightly coloured doors. And he sniffed. <laughs> and he could smell all of his neighbours' breakfasts and they smelt delicious. And that's when he had his best idea. If he couldn't reach the biscuits in his cupboard, 
and he was too lazy to go to the shop. He would get his neighbours to give them, give him their breakfast. So he went up to the first door. Now, can I ask you, what colour was the first door? Does anyone know what the first colour of the door was, of the first house? Do you know, Lucas, what colour was the first door? Uh, yellow. Was it yellow? It was a bright, sunshiny yellow. It was, Lucas. And, and Nancy knocked on the door. Now, you can help me knock on the door. He went. Knock. Oh, knock. And that yellow door opened, and there stood one of Nancy's neighbours. Now, Nancy lived with lots of other animals. Do you know who lived behind the yellow door? Louie. Do you know what animal lived behind the yellow door? I guess what? Do you know, Lucas? I... Who was it, Lucas? Who was it, Lucas? I quite don't know. Can you name an animal? What was it a spider? Spider. Spider. It was another spider. It was, Lucas. It was a Nancy's best friend. And this spider was cooking up a wonderful breakfast. This spider's name was Sheila, and she was making lots and lots of lovely food. Do you have a favourite food, Lucas? Lucas, what's your, what's your, what you your favourite uh, food? What do you like to eat, or what do you like to bake? Yes, like fish fingers. Fish well, that's what Sheila was having for breakfast. She was making fish finger sandwiches for breakfast. And Nancy could smell them. And he said, oh, Sheila, Sheila, I'm so hungry. Would you share your fish finger sandwiches with me? And Sheila said, of course, Nancy. Of course, I'll share my fish fingers with you. But they're not quite ready. You see, I like them nice and golden. And then I like to put them in the sandwich just so they're melting the butter and they're not quite ready. I tell you what, Nancy, if you come back in a little bit. That's all. Bit <laughs> but unfortunately, and as she said, I don't have a watch. How do I know when to come back? And she said, don't worry, Nancy. Do what I do. We've got webs. Tell you what, spin one of your webs. I'll tie it to my door and I'll give it a tug when the fish fingers are ready. So that's what Anansi did. And you can do it too. He took one of his legs and he spun some web and he tied it to the door. And then off he went. And he tied it to his other leg so he wouldn't lose hold of it. He went to the next door. And the next door was another brightly coloured door. Yanina, do you know what colour the door was? Yes, I do. What colour was it? It was... This colour green. Green, a lovely limey green it was. It was a beautiful lime green. And who lived behind that door, John? Who lived behind that door? Uh, a, 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 a bear. A bear it was indeed. Boris the bear, a huge brown bear. And he was busy in his kitchen making his favourite breakfast. Now I'll ask Bianca. Bianca, do you have a favourite breakfast you like to eat? Ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. And so did Boris. It was his best breakfast. And it was a ham and eggs day. And he was busy there in the kitchen, slicing his ham and getting his eggs ready when a Nancy knocked at that lime green door. He knocked with a knock, knock, knock. Bear. Boris opened the door. What do you want, a Nancy? You see, Boris knew that Anansi was very tricky and he thought he was going to play one of his tricks on him. Oh, Boris, I'm so hungry. Oh, I haven't eaten for days and I can smell your delicious ham and I, I sense there might be eggs and I wondered, would you please share some of your ham and eggs with me? <gasps> well, as long as there's no tricks... Yes, I will share my ham and eggs with you, but I like my eggs just right. And they're not just right. And I wouldn't want to give you an unright egg. So I'll tell you what, Mr Anansi, if you come back in a little while, I will share some ham and eggs with you. Very good, said Anansi. I'll tell you what I'll do. My friend Sheila said, 
if you don't mind, I'm going to attach some web to your door and to my leg. And if you give it a tug when it's ready, I'll be right back. So Boris and off he went back into his kitchen while Anansi spun, are you ready? He spun that web and he tied it to the door and then he tied it to one of his other legs. Well, then he went to the next door along. Now, what colour was this door? Let's see. Bianca, can you tell me what colour this door was? Red. Red. It was a bright red, as red as a ladybird, this door. And, and who lived behind this door? Louis, do you know an animal? Have you got an animal that could live behind this door? A shark. A shark it was. Sid the shark. Now, Sid was cooking up an amazing breakfast. Now, Pauline, do you know what breakfast Sid was cooking up? He was having toast with lots of runny honey. He certainly was having lots of runny honey on his toast. That is just the best, best breakfast for shark. So Sid was just about to put the honey on the toast. That was me. There's a knock. Oh. And of course, we know who it was. It was that Mr. and Nancy, with two legs tied to two other doors. Oh, Sid, I'm so pleased you're in. Oh, is that toast I can smell? Oh, I'm so hungry, Sid. Is it ready? You see, I wondered if you would just share a bit of your breakfast with me. I haven't eaten for days and days and days. And Sid said, well, I would love to share some of my toast with you, but I'm afraid the honey's not quite runny. I'm leaving it in the sun to get just a little bit runnier, but when it is runny and it is dripping on the toast, then yes, my little spider friend, you may share my toast with me. He was a shark from quite far away. So, you know what happens next? Mr. Anansi spun his web and he tied it to one of his other legs. Now, if you remember, how many legs did Mr. Anansi have? He had eight legs. And how many houses were in his street? Eight houses. Now, we've only knocked at three doors. And so that Pauline can have a chance to tell her story, we're not going to knock at the other... Oh, oh how many are left? Five, thank you, Nina. You need a yes, five other doors. But let me tell you, behind those five other brightly coloured doors, there were five more delicious breakfasts being cooked by five other creatures. out who? And just like before, those breakfasts weren't ready. And just like before, and Nancy spun his web and he tied them until he had all eight legs tied to all eight neighbours' doors, all waiting for those eight delicious breakfasts. Suddenly, our very first door, that beautiful sunshine yellow door, with Sheila the spider behind, <gasps> Her fish fingers were ready, and she began to tug at the door. But as her fish fingers were ready, so too, behind that beautiful lime green door. Well, Boris's, Boris the bear, his breakfast, that delicious breakfast of ham and eggs was ready too, and he began to tug. And at the same time, behind that lovely red ladybird door was that beautiful, beautiful toast and honey from our very exotic shark from across the water, Sid. And he began to tug, and so did all the other five doors, until Nancy's legs were being tugged this way and that way and this way and that way, and they were growing longer and longer and longer. And as his legs grew longer and longer, his body which, remember, was very large and round, was growing smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until finally he couldn't take it anymore with a quick snip, 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 snip. He cut all of those threads from all of those rules. <gasps> but when he looked down, his body was tiny. <gasps> And 
his legs were long. And he was so hungry. <laughs> so he went back to his house. And he opened the door with his now long leg. And he went into his kitchen. And he suddenly realised. Oh, I may now have a small body. And very long legs. But I can reach my cupboard. And so he reached with his really long legs all the way up to his cupboard. Then he opened the door and he snaffled down those biscuits. But he saved one and he put it up in the corner of his room. And from that day on, and Nancy and all of his descendants, all of his ancestors now have tiny little bodies and great big long legs. And they always leave a little bit of their breakfast or dinner or tea up high, just in case they get hungry. Because they know they'll be able to reach it later. <laughs> and that is the end of our very long tale. Yay. Thank you. And <laughs> Pauline, Pauline's got to run off and get her little girl Molly. But before that, have you got a really quick five minute story for us, Pauline? Oh, I'm sure I can manage one. Yes. Well, my story is the story of how one animal came to be, about how one insect came to be. Because it was a beautiful sunny day and Mother Nature had just finished creating all the creatures that she had to create for that day. She made a couple of birds, quite a few beetles. She really likes beetles, all different colors of the rainbow. And she was just settling down to a nice cup of tea, which she just invented, when all of a sudden she heard a noise next to her. <laughs> And she looked down, and on the ground next to her was this little green frog with the biggest, widest eyes you've ever seen in your whole life. And she looked down at Frog, and Frog said, Oh, Mother Nature, I'm very, very grateful for the beautiful green skin and the bouncy legs that you've given me, but there's something about these eyes. You see, they're just so, so big that the other animals laugh at me. Can I have some smaller ones? And Mother Nature said, I gave you those ones so that you could see all the tasty flies that you'll want to eat. But sure. And she opened a little bag on the shelf in her shed at the bottom of her garden, which was where she made her animals. And she took out two little eyes and took out the big ones, put the little ones in, and took those two big eyes and popped them on the shelf. And the frog said, thank you so much, Mother Nature. And he was so happy, he wore the biggest, froggiest smile you've ever seen. And off he hopped. Well, she got out her deck chair and the sun had come out and she was just lowering herself down into the deck chair and getting comfortable when she heard a noise. <laughs> Mother Nature, said the voice, and she looked up, and here was the most beautiful rainbow-coloured butterfly. Oh, she said, I remember creating you just a few weeks ago. Oh, yes, said the butterfly. Everybody admires my rainbow wings, but you gave me a long, 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 long skinny body. And all the other insects, they call me skinny malinky long legs on Borelli feet and they laugh at me. And, oh, maybe it is a little bit too long, said Mother Nature. And she opened a little drawer in her shed and she had a look and she found a nice short body and she pulled off the long body, popped it down on the shelf and put in the nice 
short body and off to the beautiful rainbow butterfly as happy as happy could be. And she sat down in her deck chair and she was just opening up a packet of custard creams which she'd just invented. She was just about to dink it into her tea when a little creature scurried along and fell. And it scurried a little bit further and it tripped and it fell and she said, oh spider, how are you today? And he said, I'm not good. Why aren't you good? Well, the thing is, right, he said, you gave me 14 legs. I, I keep tripping over. Oh, she said, but, but you did, did want lots and lots of long, hairy legs to, to frighten people with, didn't you? Yeah, it certainly works. But the problem is, I've got too many legs. I keep tripping over. Oh, I see that, she said. Well, that's okay. We can always change that. <laughs> How many do you think? Do you think seven? I, I don't want to have an odd number of legs, no, said the spider. I'll take off six and you can have eight, said Mother Nature. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. She pulled six legs off. Spider stretched out his long hairy legs and off he went to appear in another story. Well, she was thinking to herself, soon I will get a rest. And she was lowering herself down and she, she had this inkling that she was going to invent donuts because she fancied something tasty. And... In front of her hovered B. Oh, hello, Bee, she said. How are you? How those beautiful, iridescent, shining wings sparkle in the sunlight. And Bee said, oh, the thing about the wings is <laughs> you made the pollen and the nectar inside the flowers so tasty. <laughs> I like the ones that deep inside the flower, but I can't get to it because every time I get close, me big wings, me big long wings. I can't get in, I can't get in, they're too big, they're too long. Well, I think that was a bit of a design flaw, said Mother Nature. But don't worry, she opened another drawer, out came two short wings and there we were. And she put the long wings down and off flew Bee, as happy as could be. And she looked down on the ground and there, just, but she didn't even get to sit down this time. It was the most beautiful, sparkling, green, turquoisey green lizard. And his eyes darted here and there and everywhere. And he said, Mother Nature, Mother Nature. And she said, what is it? You're safe here with me. Yeah, but the big birds up in the sky, they see my sparkly skin. They, they see the sun reflect off the turquoise and green and they try to eat me. Fear not, she said. I'll have a look. And she opened up a rail that came out. It was, I think it must have been an Ikea shed that she'd gone to. And there was all sorts of beautiful skins hanging there. And she selected one which was sort of green that would camouflage the little lizard in the grass. And off came the sparkly one. And oh, he tried it on and scurried into the grass. Can you see me now? No, she can't. I can't see you at all, she said. All the animals had come and gone and she settled down. But Mother Nature doesn't like waste. And she looked at the great big eyes that the frog had left behind. And she looked at the long, shining, iridescent wings, the shiny wings that the butterfly had left. And she looked at Spider's six legs that he had left behind. And, sorry, it was the butterfly's long, long body that was left behind. And the wings, the wings that the bee had left behind, and lizard skin. And she thought, I don't like waste. Maybe I could make a new animal. So can anyone think what insect she made? Big eyes, a long body, long wings, six legs, and a beautiful glittering turquoisey green 
shining skin. Can anyone think what animal she made? Does it breathe fire? <gasps> it doesn't, but the animal it's named hey, after it really does. Loudly. It really loudly. Dragonfly. That's right, it was a dragonfly. And it was the happiest little insect that Mother Nature ever made. Well, thank Yay! you, Pauline. Pauline. Pauline's got to run because got Molly, run. Molly's waiting on the paper yes. outside the school. Yeah, she'll she, be standing she there. She thinks your mum forgotten her. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Lovely um, to see you all. And, and I hope all the little miracles have a great time back at school or whatever they're going. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thanks. Bye, 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 Bye. 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 Well, that was, that was that was a true storytelling festival, a little miracle storytelling festival. So thank you, Hannah. Thank Hannah, you, John. You, Hannah, you 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 will undoubtedly come to a Friday children's night for us at some point. I we'll, will definitely. We'll talk about that. You need us here this Friday, and. So every Friday night, there's uh, six o'clock. There's going to be children stuff. So you'll be back from school, and you can you you can still see us. Bianca, are you going to be with us ever again? Uh, I cannot promise that. You oh. cannot promise, but we <laughs> you've been with us all summer. Yay. And a round of applause for Bianca. Yeah. And uh, you've been fantastic. And uh, so. But we we there's Gary and uh, Adian are on at four, not live, but they'll be there. They're they're lovely set on at four. But for now, bye bye. Bye, John. Bye, John. Bye, John. bye everyone. Bye, bye, bye everyone. Happy celebrate. Thank you, John. Bye. 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 bye.